couple of Sundays ago, do you remember what we talked about? You didn't know there was going to be a test, right? Yeah, divine order. Thank you so much. So I have a little tip for you. If uh, you might not want to share your perspective on divine order when you have airplane reservations the next day. <laughs> Just FYI. So anybody remember the movie uh, White Christmas? Um, Bing Crosby and Rosemary Clooney sang. What did they sing? When you're worried and you can't sleep. Just count your blessings and sleep. Yes, and what's the rest part? And you'll fall asleep counting your blessings. What? So when we are counting our blessings, what do we count? We count friends who are on our spiritual journey with us, right? We count co-travelers who walk with us through the valley of the shadow of death through the Twilight Brigade training. We celebrate a new daughter, a new granddaughter for our Board of Trustees, President Will, our new great-grandnephew for me, the crew from American Airlines that discovered airplane mechanical issues on the ground before I boarded. When we're counting our blessings, do we remember to count the center seat on the rebooked flight to meet my connection, <laughs> the car I paid way too much money for, the speeding ticket I positively deserved, the job I didn't get, the company downsize that pushed a family member toward foreclosure, the beautiful strand of hand-knotted pearls that went missing for 10 years. No, not usually. It took my forgiving everyone who I thought could have taken them. <laughs> it only took 10 years. Hey, work in progress. And then they just showed up. Now, it could be that I actually put them where they showed up, but I don't know. I don't remember doing that. Anyway, I don't usually count those things as blessings because those things are blessings that show up in disguise. But the spiritual path that I've committed myself to tells me that everything that shows up in my life comes to bless me. It shows up for a reason. I've attracted it into my life for a reason. And... We often do what some of us call metaphysical malpractice on ourselves when we say things like, how in the world did I create this? And it gives us an opportunity to, to beat ourselves up, to punish ourselves for not knowing what we couldn't know until we learn it. And so today I just want to encourage each of us to be very gentle with ourselves. When we worry and we can't sleep, when we count the worries, what we're doing is reverse goal setting because we use all the tools, don't we, when we worry. We visualize what could possibly happen, right? Sharon's getting a new bathroom installed. She's having, is it done yet? Finished. It's finished. Are you, and, you're, and now the blessing is here. And, but there's a process, right? Where, where, am I right? There was a process, right? And some of those things, I'm sure, didn't look like blessings at first. Well, for one thing, you don't have that bathroom to use, you know, for... Never mind, I'm, I'm, I don't think I want to go there. All right, so where was I? Oh, yes, so then we, we, use, we visualize, when we worry, we visualize what could possibly go wrong. We focus our attention on, oh, my gosh, this, if this happens right, we visualize it, we focus our attention on it, we use all our tools for goal setting on the worry. And then God in us, as us, says, yes, beloved, you can have what you want. And our prayers are answered. Whew. When we say things like, I don't have the sense God gave little green apples, or I don't know what I expect, I never get a break, or, well, this is it. My body's just falling apart. God in us, as us, says, yes, beloved, you can have what you want. And our prayers are answered. When we're worried and we can't sleep and we count our blessings, I invite us to each change our focus from the worry to the blessing, even those blessings that show up in disguise. Because sitting in that center seat, surrounded by other people who took up the armrests, I 
kept asking myself, listen, I planned this so well. I planned it so perfectly. I chose my seat. I, you know, like, and then I remembered, you know, the, air, the flight was canceled because they found mechanical difficulties. Wouldn't you rather that happen then than now? And I'm sitting in the center seat. Well, I have to tell you, I wasn't grateful. But I'm grateful today. So you t the turnaround time is sometimes 30 seconds and sometimes it's two weeks. It happens. So uh, just, is this enough when focusing, just moving from worry to gratitude? Is that enough? Most of us who have practiced these principles for six months or six years have learned that we get some great demonstrations, don't we? When we just take our focus off the things that we're worried about and we put our focus on gratitude, it's in, what's that little pamphlet of the golden key? Stop thinking about what's bothering you and start thinking about God. Start thinking about love, about the expanding power of love. And we know that we get great results from that. And for some of us, that has become not enough anymore. We want more. There, we want more than just the demonstrations in our human life. We want a deeper spiritual understanding from the gospel according to Matthew during the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus spoke, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where the thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven. And remember where Jesus taught us the kingdom of heaven resides in us. Store up for ourselves in our spiritual understanding, in our spiritual consciousness, that understanding that thieves cannot steal for where your treasure is there will your heart be also. So that has become not quite enough for me. And I've made a commitment to growing in spiritual consciousness, to be aware of those things that turn up in my lives, in my lives. Oh, wow. Okay, that one too. It show up in this life and those others that are in disguise, that don't look like blessings. And I have to remember that when something shows up in my life that's in disguise, I have to be ready with, just like the batter is ready in baseball, I have to be ready with my consciousness to handle it and to remember who I am. Like the outfielder in the, the baseball game who said, I wondered why the ball kept getting bigger and then it hit me. <laughs> So as we're working on our spiritual consciousness, there are opportunities for us to be upset with ourselves. And I invite you to be gentle with yourself. I invite you to join me in changing 2020 hindsight to 2020 kind sight. And be very gentle with ourselves as we move through this process. To treat ourselves with love, there's a Karen Drucker song. I will be gentle with myself, and I will hold myself like a newborn baby child. It's a beautiful song, and sometimes I hear it, and I say, yes, that's just what I'm doing. And sometimes I hear it, and I, tears come, and I say, I've been mean to me this week. I'm, I'm going to change that now. So it's a challenge, isn't it? And, and we, we have to learn not only to be gentle with ourselves, to be patient with ourselves. And as we learn patience, we've learned, instead of talking about divine order, we also don't talk about patience. Because what happens is we get an infinite number of opportunities to practice divine order and to practice patience. But when we begin to practice patience in the checkout line, which is a really good place to start, we also begin to practice those little subsets of patience, like clear communication, clarifying what someone says instead of assuming Text messaging, how many people have uh, overreacted, underreacted to a Facebook post or text message? 97% of communication is nonverbal. And what we get in a text message, that doesn't give us tone of voice, body language, any of that. The other, we just get 3% of it. So, you know, that's not in here. I just... I, this is the reason I use notes. See, one reason I, one thing I am not gentle with myself about is my inability to get away from that. And the reason is because you guys want to leave before 12:30, and if I don't stay with it, at least essentially to this, we'll be here a while. <laughs>
And we don't want to do that, do we? Do we? So, for today, I invite you to join me in transforming 2020 hindsight to 2020 kindsight. Join me in changing our basic fundamental belief that mistakes are bad and sin is evil to a belief that mistakes are messages and sin is a, an intense encounter with life. Just as we're about to have intense encounters with our taste buds in our tasting after this service, let's transform our consciousness so we can learn from each of those encounters and we can go on to make wiser choices, choices that serve us, that serve each other, and serve our world. When we adjust our perception and we become gentle with ourselves, when we transform hindsight to kind sight, we're opening ourselves up to deeper experiences of satisfaction and peace of mind, of understanding that whatever comes into my life, I have everything I need right here, right now, to move through it gently and lovingly. Allow me to close with these words from Max Ehrman. Beyond a wholesome discipline, be gentle with yourself. You are a child of the universe, no less than the trees and the stars, and you have a right to be here. And whether or not it is clear to you, no doubt the universe is unfolding as it should. Therefore, be at peace with God, whatever you conceive God to be and whatever your labors and aspirations in the noisy confusion of life, keep peace with your soul. Let's pray. Precious, precious spirit in us, as us, we acknowledge the blessings in our lives that have showed up in disguise. And we know that there is an opportunity to learn and grow from each of them. We know that if we're still occupying a body, we're still students, truth students. And for this path that we've chosen to follow in the footsteps of our way shower and master teacher, Jesus the Christ, who taught us to love God, to love each other, and to love ourselves, we say amen.